on this diamond celebration of a century, we salute the prodigious accomplishments, vision, and mere essence of our founding members who ignited the blaze that has fought for the profession of all professions towards education for responsibility. This evening, 100 years later, we set out on a journey through our legacy in century in celebration of our leaders who have carried that kindled blaze with the hope to ignite a pride so bright in Bermuda's Mother Union for not only securing responsible conditions of education for our public schools, but also for instilling the significance of understanding the struggles of the labor union movement and its connection to the importance of solidarity. And so tonight, we light a candle in memory of our founding members. We ignite a flame in remembrance of the leaders and fellow educators who are no longer here and have passed on. We set ablaze in honor of every living leader who has carried the torch along our journey. We give light to each and every student who enters into our classrooms that they may be productive citizens of our country. We also ignite a blaze for every member in this noble profession who grooms and creates opportunity for our next generation of leaders. Tonight, we honor the legacy of our leadership of the Bermuda Union of Teachers as we acknowledge our centenary celebration, 100 years strong. For this evening's official welcome, please welcome our sitting president who has brought us through this centenary anniversary, Brother Shannon James. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Centenary Gala. Don't worry, I have no doves to release. <laughs> I'd like to welcome the Deputy Premier. Thank you for coming. I'd like to welcome the Minister of Labor, of Labor Community Affairs and Sports. Thank you for coming. I'd like to thank all and welcome all ministers. Thank you. I'd like to welcome the shadow ministers. Thank you. I'd like to welcome the, our, our, our brothers and sisters in the fellow trade union movement. Thank you for coming. Now, some of our members are very, some of, our, of the people here are very um, special, extremely special. We have the relatives of some of our founders. We have the relatives of Reverend Rufus Stubble. If you can just stand, please. Now it's funny, I found out that when Reverend Stavel went from parish to parish doing his thing, he had a young lady who he would take to recite poetry. That young lady was my grandmother. So what, what a connection. We have representatives from the Adam Tucker family. You can get that one here. And then we have cousins Edith and Matilda Crawford, representatives from their family also. You can give them a hand. We have visiting with us the president of the Caribbean Union of Teachers. 
Brother Judy Monroe, if you can just stand so we can give you a hand. Also, we have with us from the National Education Association, I see them over there. We have three members of the NEA, and they presented our union with this book that has been put together by their president, Lily Garcia, and is entitled Rebel Rousers, Fearless Fighters for Social Justice, and also this um, crystal globe that says, congratulations, BUT, on your 100 years of success. So thank you, NEA, for this. Thank you. I'd like to also welcome the former presidents of the Bermuda Union Teachers. If you are able to stand or just raise your hand, if you are a former president, and someone came and said, once a president, always a president. So if you are a president of the Bermuda Union of Teachers, if you could just let us acknowledge you by standing or raising your hand. everyone, it's here, 100 years. It's a surreal feeling, and I recall at our 95th thinking, wow, 95 years. 100 years seems so far away, and here we are. Here you are joining us to welcome this union into the next 100 years. It's a humbling feeling. A lot of people that have asked, what's it like to be the president at this moment? It's a humbling feeling. When you think about everyone that has gone on before, when you think about everyone that has taught, people that have taught you, when you just think about the path, when you think about the founders and what they did 100 years ago, to stand at this part of history, it's a humbling experience. Also, to be the president of a trade union is, is a, it's, it's a different experience. And only a president can understand what it feels like to be a president of a trade union because you have this balance that you have to, to handle. So to the presidents of any trade union, thank you for doing what you do. Thank you so much. You can give them a chance. A lot has changed in 100 years. A hundred years ago, a laptop meant something totally different than what it means today. One hundred years ago, to be online meant something totally different than it means today. Things have changed. The union has changed. The union has had to evolve. If not, we would not have made it one hundred years. It's funny that one hundred years ago, our founders used their creativity to come up with this union. And one of the amazing things about that is there was no template. The time that they were living in, they were not supposed to be, according to society's norms, they were not supposed to be forerunners of anything. Four women? Three women, sorry. You are not supposed to be in the front, and you were black too, you were not supposed to be in the front. So to our founders, like it's just a wonderful thing what they did, and, and we are forever grateful for what they have done. Times have changed, and like I said, online means something totally different. They did not have to worry about or deal with the anonymous posters on the social sites. <laughs> they did not have to deal with the anonymous WhatsApp messages that floated around. They didn't have to deal with any of that. But we do. And as we lead into this next 100 years, we don't know what we're going to face. But sisters and brothers, we know that we can do it. 
So without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to this banquet. Have a great time. It's been 100 years. Enjoy yourselves. Families, thank you for joining us. Past presidents, thank you for joining us. Everybody, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Let us pray. Omnipotent God, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, we pause amidst this centennial celebration and as we look back, we give you thanks, O oh God, for raising up educators, those who were called to the noble and virtuous profession to lead out, to draw out the potential that was embedded in your people. And so we thank you, O God, for the founders of this great union, for their vision, for their courage, for their will. For we're reminded, O God, that this union was founded in the shadow of slavery. This union was founded during a period where there was stark segregation and racism and discrimination. And yet it was this union, O oh God, where you had three women during a time when women were supposed to stay in their place, that had the courage and the fortitude to lay the foundation upon which thousands of teachers have been building. And so we thank you, O oh God, on this centennial day because 100 years later, Teachers are still committing to leading out those that are steeped in potential that they might realize and fulfill every aspiration. For it was teachers, oh God, that taught a generation how to break down the walls of segregation. It was teachers, oh God, that taught generations how to dream. It was teachers, oh God, that empowered a generation to transform an island and bring us to this place. So we pray tonight that as we celebrate this centennial, that you will bless this union, bless the teachers that make up this union. We pray, O oh God, that you'll continue to give them the courage and the will, very often to stoop with worn out tools and build up and make brick out of straw. Pray, O oh God, that as this union moves forward, that it'll move forward in coordination and collaboration with the government that will listen to the voices of teachers that understand education and understand the needs, the changing needs of our people. And so now as we tarry in this place, we thank you for all that we have been. We thank you for bringing us to this place. And we embrace the hope of a future that is unparalleled and unlimited. Bless us this night as we celebrate 100 years later. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Founders of the BUT, Embers, you birthed a spiritous nation amidst a colonial situation, a feat deserving high acclaim. Yet not much of you was archived at the time by those steeped in the belligerence of placement. And still, you burn. 
This placement of your genius was a misplaced fetus of an inevitable birth amidst the smoldering starkness of the separation of humanity, predestined to forever change the track of life for black folk. And inevitably spring forth intermediaries powerful enough to change the negotiate ideal for all. For all who work, for all our children and their children and their children's children. Today, we bear witness that you collectively were the first. I bet you didn't know that you, as embers, would become an inferno 100 years later. And still, you burn. We honor your vision of power in numbers, striving for quality retributions for richer, not poorer, towards health within sickness, for comparable work, for comparable pay, of educating in spite of the appearance of lack and all of his you-can't-have cohorts. We reap your solidarity today, which gave rise to tens of thousands of sisters and brothers respecting one another in spite of their complexities of being human and working for the powers that be, while sometimes losing ground with those in their families. I bet you didn't know that you, as embers, would become an inferno 100 years later, and still you burn. Recognizing that all of us are journeying this life together on a trajectory of survival, thriving through your consciousness of God, you, smoldering embers, have now indeed burst forth in a blaze too strong to be extinguished. Bermuda Union of Teachers, go on in the name of the Lord. I bid you to go on, and may God prosper your labors day by day. Founders, Adele Tucker, Crawford Cousins, Edith and Matilda, and the Rev, Reverend Rufus Stubb, your embers stayed the course. Today, February 1st, 2019, we give thanks for your understanding of God's universe, your vision of morality for Bermuda, and your quest for imparting knowledge in every book that we could construe. We give thanks for your teachings of our ancestors. We give thanks for securing succor from willing benefactors, and we give thanks to all who bolstered, rejuvenated, and extolled you amidst the woes set before you, as in your early days, your literal struggle for survival was real. I bet you didn't know that you, as embers, would become an inferno 100 years later, mm. and still you burn.